patient fairy okay so as you can see here we have uh, good cards uh, recommended cards and universal cards right there and also I will zoom in again so that you can see it a bit more clearly okay so we have good cards as you can see there fairy wind right fairy box and the prime monarch and another thing I want to mention is that I'm going to zoom in but one thing I'm going to do differently with this uh, recommendations video is when I'll zoom in I'll go to fairy wind right and then I will show you the card and tell you its effects and tell you how to use it and then I'll go to the next card fairy box like that and I'll go with the prime monarch like that okay so that's it good cards fairy wind fairy box the prime monarch now i'm going to talk about fairy wind okay so here i go as we zoom in to fairy wind and how it looks like okay in front of you you can see fairy wind so let's read that effect destroy as many face up spell or trap cards on the field as possible other than this card and if you do each player takes damage equal to the number of cards destroyed by this effect multiplied by 300. I'd like to say, uh, fun fact, this is one of the earliest uh, cards in the game that was spell and trap removal for face-up cards. So this was one of the first earliest cards we had that could really get rid of face-up uh, floodgates. So just know that this is a really good card you know, to get. It's not really going expensive right now, so you know, definitely it's a good card. Okay, let's go to the next card on this list, which is Fairy Box. Now let's go zoom in to Fairy Box and have a look at what it looks like. Okay, so here is Fairy Box. As you can see, Fairy Box is a continuous trap card, and so let's read its effect. When your opponent's monster declares an attack, toss a coin and call it. If you call it right, the attacking monster's attack becomes zero until the end of the battle phase. During each of your standby phases, pay 500 life points or destroy this card. Yes, this is one of our first cards we had in the game, including the gate attack. That was a card that could, as, it, as I just said, negate an attack from your opponent. Definitely in the earliest games of Yu-Gi-Oh! Now, is this a card worth getting? Maybe if you want to play some, some old school Yu-Gi-Oh! Some GOAT format, definitely get this card for the casual player, for the GOAT format player. But Okay, and the last card on this list is the Prime Monarch. So like before, we're going to now zoom in to how the Prime Monarch looks like. So let's do that right now. Okay, you can see the Prime Monarch in front of you. It is another continuous trap, and let's read that effect. Once per turn, you can target two Monarch spells or traps in your graveyard, shuffle them into the deck, then draw one card. If this card is in your graveyard, you can banish one of the Monarch spell slash trap from your graveyard, special summon this card in defense position as a normal monster, fairy, light, level five, attack 1000, and defense 2400. This card is not treated as a trap card. You can only use this effect of the Prime Monarch once per turn. Now the reason why this card is here, you're wondering, it looks like Monarch support, but it is technically a fairy monster as we can see there and it's a really, you know, good card if you're playing with Monarchs. Outside of that, you know, it's, it could be considered, you know, if you're making, you know, a Monarch hybrid, you know, in today's format, it's Monarchs are a little bit... I, we, we don't know. So, you know, use on your own peril but definitely monarchs are a are a great deck and you know they have terrorized the community for when they got the their up their their latest cards at their time they are good for their time okay that's it <laughs>
so let's read that effect. Destroy as many face-up spell or trap cards on the field as possible, other than this card. And if you do, each player takes damage equal to the number of cards destroyed by this effect multiplied by 300. I would like to say a uh, fun fact, this is one of the earliest uh, cards in the game that was spell and trap removal for face-up cards. So this was one of the first earliest cards we had that could really get rid of face-up uh, floodgates. So just know that this is a really good card, you know, to get. It's not really going expensive right now, so you know, definitely it is a good card. Get this card. Okay, and let's talk about the next card, Angel Statue Azarun. And we're going to zoom into Angel of Statue Azarun and talk more about it. Here I go. Okay, right in front of you, you can see the continuous track Angel Statue Azarun. So let's read that effect. Special summon this card as an effect monster. It's a fairy slash light level 4 with 1800 attack points and 1800 defense points. This card is also treated as a trap. Once per turn, when your opponent would special summon a monster while this card is in your monster zone, you can send to the graveyard one continuous trap in your monster zone that was special summoned from the spell or trap zone, negate the summon. And if you do destroy that monster, monsters, when this card in the monster zone is destroyed by battle, you can destroy the monster that destroyed this card. Well, this card, ugh, I don't know. So it's, it looks like it's specifically designed to target trap monsters. So whether that's going to be useful in the future, who's to say? It's technically a fairy. As we can see here, it becomes a level four fairy with 1800 attack and 1800 defense. So we've got the same stats there. Now, whether this will be useful in the future, who knows? But that's it. Moving on. Okay, universal cards. And as we can see here, I'll start listing them. So we have a Fairy Wind, as you can see there. We have a Synthetic Seraphim. We have Fairy Box. Fairy's Hands Mirror. This is the Prime Monarch. Here we have the Angel Statue Azarun. And here we have Miracle, Miraculous Descent. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and zoom in in the next few minutes and just show it to you again and read it to you again and as you can see in front of you we'll talk about what you can see universal cards fairy wind fairy box synthetic seraphim fairy's hand the prime monarch angel statue as a rune miraculous descent so now what i'm going to do uh, on this section is i've put timestamps for the other traps that i've showcased so I'm now going to showcase, you know, three, uh, you know, cards here that zoom into them and talk about them individually. So first, let's start with Synthetic Seraphim. Okay, as you can see in front of you, you can see the continuous trap Synthetic Seraphim. So let's read that effect. Each time a counter trap is activated immediately after it resolves, special summon one Synthetic Seraphim token, Fairy, Light level 1, attack 300 and defense 300. And as you can see there on the side, you can see the synthetic seraphim token which would be summoned off the effect of the continuous trap uh, synthetic seraphim, as you can see right there. That's pretty much it. So when you're going to use this, you know, possibly in the counter fairy archetype, but just one quick note, it's not searchable. So there's that. Okay, next. Okay, we're back to this, uh, you know, page again. And we're going to talk about the next card, Fairy Hands Mirror. So let's go and zoom into that card and find out more about that uh, trap card. Let's go. Okay, as you can see in front of you, we have the normal trap, Fairy Hands Mirror. So let's read its effect. When your opponent activates a spell card that targets exactly one monster and no other cards on the field, target another card that would be an appropriate target. That spell now targets the new target. Well, this is a card that we had when, you know, the game was first released, you know, during the first releases of the game, where, you know, this card was a good counter to, you know, Hammer Strike and just the plain destruction cards we had back in the, back in the, you know, the beginning of Yu-Gi-Oh! You know, we had spell cards, weren't really 
that strong and the what and the, the basically the overall damage we didn't get dark hole until quite late into you know starting Yu Gi. but anyways leaving that aside this is a great card for any spell that you have that your opponent activates that targets um, you know a monster in your side of the field so this is a good thing to counter you know the, for the forbidden cards so definitely like the forbidden series the forbidden series these are the forbidden quick play spells this is a card that you could use you know to to protect one of your monsters you would redirect it to another monster on your side of the field um but what's really interesting about this card is that now i don't know it should technically be it says when you so let's uh, if we read this effect again it says when you put activates a spell card that targets exactly one monster and other cards you can target another card that would be an appropriate target. Now, possibly, maybe you could target, you know, your opponent's, uh, you know, cards. Um, but I think that's not necessarily the case. Maybe back when it was released, but now with the rulings being a bit more firm, a bit more robust, it's going to have to be monsters on your side of the field. Um, although it's not stated on here, it, this is where it can get a little bit confusing. So you need to bear this in mind that um, you know you need to realize that this this card can only transfer the effect onto another monster on your side of the field. I don't think you would be able to target your opponent's uh, monster. Maybe you could. Maybe it is classified as an appropriate target. You know who knows. But to just play it safe. I believe you should use your own monsters. I, but you should, you know, really an appropriate target would be the opponent's monster on the sound of the field. If you, if they don't have any targeting protection, you should be able to target them. So, for example, if your opponent acti if they activated, uh, let's say, forbidden droplets, you responded with fairy hands mirror, and they have a face up monster on the sound of the field. So. There, you could activate your hands mirror, and you would redirect the target, you know, of your of their forbidden droplet to their monster. That should work, because as we see the effect here, it states clearly. But yeah, I'll definitely, definitely that that's something you need to look up. Yeah. Okay, and we're back to this page again, and finally we're gonna be talking about the last card you can see on this Universal Cards Miraculous Descent. So let's zoom into it and have a look at what it looks like and talk a little bit more about this card here. Okay, as you can see in front of you, we have the Continuous Trap, Miraculous Descent. So let's read that effect. Target one of your banished fairy monsters, special summon it. When this card leaves the field, destroy that monster. When that monster is destroyed, destroy this card. So, you know, this is one of those cards that's really good, you know, for a fairy deck, you know, you have you can target one of your banished fairies, special summon it. Um, yeah, it's. I would say it's a staple enough if you have a fairy deck that, you know, banishes cards a lot and you, know, you want to recover your resources. Yeah, pretty good. It's all right. That's it, really. We come to the end of this video. So, as I like to say, you are one step closer to becoming a Yu-Gi-Oh! Master. My faith, right? is in your hands. Um, hopefully I'll see, hopefully you know you'll, you'll subscribe to this channel and uh, wait a couple of minutes and you'll, seconds, sorry, and you'll see some other videos that appear on my channel. Hope to see you soon and thank you.